Hello everyone, welcome to DotNet Training Academy. In this video, we are going to discuss about which programming language suits for beginners. Not only the programming languages, uh, it will be also about choosing their path after learning the programming language. So one important question which arises in all of the beginners uh, which is where to start the thing so it's a really good question but uh, if you are uh, a beginner just feel free to pick any languages and learn the basic stuff the all of the features or major things only vary so learning a language don't feel free to learn any languages and you can move on from that but there, there is also complexity. If you choose any languages, any complex languages, it will make you to feel uh, giving up. So after the after you uh, get into that complexity level, you will give up and you just quit programming. So the kicking up your career with easy programming languages, uh, it will be very helpful to grow your career in technology or programming world. So my first suggestion would be Python. So if you are a beginner, just go ahead and learn Python or Ruby or JavaScript. So the reason that I would suggest Python is Python is almost very similar to English language. So the only prerequisite to learn uh, the Python is the addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and the basic fifth, fifth grade math. So it is very easy and it is very popular and uh, nowadays it's really trending. So it's worth to learn Python as a beginner. So the next thing, if you're not uh, at all, uh, not if you're if you're the next the next uh, option will be the JavaScript, because you don't need any software to install to run JavaScript. All you need is to run, have a browser like Chrome, Mozilla, kind of things. So the next one will be Ruby. Ruby is very similar to Python, so there will be a no uh, objection to learn Ruby, uh, but it's not as popular as Python nowadays. So if you are really interested, if, you're re uh, if the name catches you, you can go ahead and learn the Ruby. So there will be no objection. So after learning these programming languages, the second question is going to be choose your own path. The reason is there will be a lot of criteria for choosing a path. Someone will be really uh, learning these kind of things for job or someone will be very passionate, or someone will be interested to do freelancing stuff, like there will be a lot of criteria. So for those people, after learning the basic and fundamental things of the, any programming languages, like basic concepts, object-oriented concepts, and this, uh, the next thing that you need to do is to improve your logical thinking. So to do that, you need to learn data structures and algorithm. So designing a solution for a problem is the very, very, very important thing in the programming or development world. So every time you get into uh, some kind of uh, problems, you need a solution in programming. So to do the perfect solution, you need a logical thinking. So how can you improve your logical thinking? You need to learn or you need to know how to design and analyze an algorithm and how to handle a data and how to structure and data. If you're really good enough in this concept, or if you're really uh, learned all the essential things in these concepts, you can almost crack everything in the programming world, or not only in the programming world, you can crack uh, in almost uh, everything in your career. So, the, after desiring, you have some criteria like uh, you are particularly interested in some fields so you would be you would like to know about that particular field how to carry on my role how to uh, go and learn about this so before choosing these kind of things i would like to go ahead and practice in the hacker rank website to improve your programming skill after you just finish that practicing stuff just uh, you, everyone has some intention, uh, like a particular ideology or particular interest on something. So the fields are, the very popular fields are the study over here, just like web developer or mobile developer or game developer or software developer. So these are the very popular areas which are evolving nowadays. So if you're really interested in web development or mobile development, game development or software development, now I'm going to give you the correct path 
how to handle things now so if you are not at all interested in any of these things or if you are interested in scientific or engineering things like artificial intelligence machine learning or networking or blockchain kind of things uh, stop here just carry on with the python because that is doing pretty good job in these skills so if you're not at all interested in those things just move on with me for the web development so there will be two phases for web development one is front end and another one is back end so front end is the visual thing which we are interacting with so there will be a two phase in front end one is designing and another one is development so when it comes to designing things you need to know about the markup so which is html which structures the element of the website and here is the two division one is basic thing and advanced thing so once you are really familiar with the basic thing you can move on with the advanced thing the reason that i i mentioned the advanced thing is uh, it will make your life a lot more easier um, when you learn those kind of things so the style uh, which is CSS cascading style sheet, which will be a real tool for designing or layering things, uh, layering things in your website, and the JavaScript and I mean the scripting language. Uh, there will be the two basic things: one is JavaScript and TypeScript. TypeScript is an advanced thing uh, because you cannot uh, entirely uh, go around with the JavaScript thing in your entire web field, but you need to at some point you you will get into the situation of going into the advanced stuff so it will be better to go on with the typescript or xmas script kind of things so the frameworks for the basic web designing is bootstrap and semantic so using these things you can almost create the really insane website but if you wanted to create something like a spa i mean single page applications like uh, less reloading if you see a lot of websites nowadays is not at all reloading more uh, the reason is it will only trigger the components not the entire website so to do those kind of things it will be separated as a front-end development so it not only involves the client side it will also helps to connect the server side so uh, angular or view or react or aurela is the best option when it comes to single page applications there will be a lot of frameworks earlier like backbone ember but it is not at all popular uh, nowadays just like these kind of things so angular view react is the very good option you can randomly pick anyone and just go ahead with that if you are interested in spa applications so the text editor the visual studio code version control will be github bitbucket and basic sales it will be like linux commands and it will be also helpful for hosting websites project management is really helpful not only for front end web design or web development it will be helpful for mobile game whatever the platform that you choose so what about the job scope or salary it's really good so that is the sign which indicates that upper arrow with green signal web developer backend Backend is something which interacts with the database and server side kind of things. So these are the popular languages uh, which is uh, really good in 2019. So, so Node.js has become very popular after the asynchronous kind of things involved in a programming language. Um, it's about 2013 after that uh, many of the companies migrated to node.js due to that uh, asynchronous kind of request response because people nowadays expecting the fast uh, the speed so the node.js is the best best option for those kind of real-time web applications and c-sharp is very very competitor to node.js because it is fast real-time and uh, extensive enterprise so Please go ahead with C Sharp or Node.js when it comes to the backend. But other than that, PHP and Go is also the other options in web development backend. But um, and I, I'm not have really very good experience in these two things. But PHP is not PHP is a very popular and it is a king of all the web servers. And, but nowadays it's not as popular or as competitive to this kind of modern programming languages or modern things but uh, it's, it's not really bad to choose php for now but uh, when comparing to other things you can go ahead with others uh, you can also pick go because uh, it is a google company officially released by google and it is really fast 
but I haven't tried that. According to my analysis, Go really suits very well. So these are all the frameworks. And uh, what are the suitable backends? Uh, these are all the suitable backends which are available for the particular language or framework. Uh, obviously, there will be a lot of backend support for each language, but these are really very specified and suitable for those particular languages. Obviously, yes, the job scope and the demand and the salary is really good for this thing. And yes, obviously, mobile development. In our day-to-day -day life, we are almost using um, daily, uh, using any mobile applications uh, with the time span of 10 minutes. So developing mobile apps, uh, which is very, really good in the market. So there will be two categories. One is uh, language and then one is framework. Uh, so I choose the languages like Dart, Java, Swift, and uh, JavaScript or TypeScript. So in 2019, I would suggest you to go for Dart and Flutter because using that language, you can almost develop a native experience with the cross platform like Android and iOS, both popular mobile frameworks. So I would suggest you to go for Flutter uh, when it comes to mobile development. But if you are not at all interested in developing cross platform, you can go ahead with Java or Swift. Java is for Android and Swift is for iOS. So that is obviously it will be supported natively by the uh, Android or iOS team. So if you are then if you are from a web background, it will be very helpful uh, or it will be very easier for you to go with the JavaScript kind of things like Ionic React and native. So the development mode will be something like cross platform with native experience for Flutter and which supports iOS and Android. And when it comes to Java, it only supports Android with native experience. It supports, Swift supports uh, iOS with native experience. And uh, these are all hybrid. These are all almost, Ionic is almost the web-based uh, kind of mobile application, uh, something like WebView. And obviously the job, the demand salary is really good for this thing. So you don't need to worry about uh, those kind of things. So it is still boom. Game development. Seriously, um, me and my friends are uh, uh, playing games uh, within uh, almost every day. So developing games is really, really uh, good for the market and the demand for developers, game developers is really very high. But you have to think twice before getting into this. The reason is game development is not as, e as easy as you think like web development or mobile development. I can give you the caution. And uh, the reason is the it is it's not that much easy. It's complex. Uh, the first thing I would tell you is the language, which is very popular is uh, in game development is C++ and C Sharp and JavaScript. There are two different kinds of game development. One is 2D and another one is 3D. So when it comes to 2D, in C++, there is a support libraries like game development engines like SDL as well as in Cocos 2D. And when it comes to 3D, there is an Unreal Engine. You can go ahead and search about that. Uh, and also, if you talked about the C Sharp, I just, uh, we, uh, my team developed a couple of games using uh, C Sharp, Unity. So I just have experience on game developing with Unity only, not other kind of things. But according to my analysis, you can go ahead with the C++ when it comes to C, uh, game development. So the JavaScript has Fixie and Phaser and Play Canvas, but it is not as um, companion or as performant as ex native experience like C++. But if you are not involving into or if you are not uh, likely to fall in the complicated world, you can just click the uh, hit the buttons with the JavaScript things. So when it comes to game development, go ahead with C++. Obviously, it has really very boom. There are a lot of game developers in demand uh, because uh, games like PUBG and uh, Clash of Clans making people addictive. So that's the thing uh, business owners need. But software, when it comes to software development, uh, you obviously know there will be uh, the reduction or decreasing thing in software development because not um, uh, not everyone using software uh, in the desktops. 
everyone is migrated to mobile apps everyone is using smart watches kind of things but so the software is just reduced so the, if you are even interested in these you can there is there is availability for java c sharp javascript and swift and also the python so there are all the these are all the frameworks like java fx wpf UWP uh, Windows presentation form and the universal Windows platform and when it comes to JavaScript it's Electron Node.js based desktop development Swift uh, which is supports the Mac OS only uh, which is a native support for the Mac OS and Python is a cross-platform Kiwi and TK into the libraries which helps you to develop desktop applications so the platform support for Java is cross-platform and C sharp Windows only JavaScript is also cross-platform and Swift is only for Mac Python is also cross-platform. So software development, if you're asking in 2019, it's not really in demand. You can go, if you're, unless you're really interested in that, please uh, go ahead with other things. So that's it for this video. If you like the video, please like, uh, share with your friends, subscribe to my channel. And if you have any queries or objections, please comment that below. Thank you. I'll see you or I'll catch you with another new video.